We're here now with Josh Lofton, our Extension Cropping System Specialist. And Josh, you're hearing from producers, they're a little worried that their crops, their summer crops are looking drought stressed. Let's sort that out. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're starting to get towards those uh, dog days of summer and, and, and it's, getting, it's getting warm, uh, it's getting a little dry out there. Uh, we have had some parts of the state still get, still get uh, periodic rain showers, but uh, a bulk majority of the state has been dry over the last couple weeks. So we're starting to see that effect on the crops uh, as, we, as we go. But are they really drought stressed? I mean, what is the real scenario there? Because we've gotten a lot of rain, significant rain this spring. Yeah, and, and, and almost that, uh, it, and it really depends. It, it, that, all that rain we got a couple of months ago almost lulls you into a false sense of security. If you actually dig down in a lot of these fields, we have substantial amount of subsoil moisture. Uh, we have a lot of moisture still present down there. Unfortunately, what happened is as these crops, a lot of our summer crops that were planted a little early, um, they just didn't get the root system developed they normally would. So even if you have a lot of moisture down low, uh, your crop could be getting a little dry and a little drought stress because it just doesn't have the root stretched down there uh, far enough yet. So um, the more and more stressed it gets, the more it could stretch down a little bit further. However, some of our summer crops that are a little more developed, a little further along, they might not get as much root growth, and so they might get a little dry and, and show those signs of drought stress uh, for more prolonged during these really hot, dry, dry periods we, we're experiencing now. Well, speaking of that, how are the crops really reacting to this you know, sudden onset of these, you know, 9,500 degree days we're seeing. Yeah, it, it really caught us. We were 80s a couple of weeks ago, and now we're, you know, looking looking down the, you know, next week, looking in the high 90s up to 100 in some places. So we, we are getting that way. Um, the, the big concern we have is is a lot of our crops that were planted kind of early to, to a little on the later side are, um, are going through reproductive growth. They're, they're starting to flower. A lot of our corn is tasseling and really starting to pollinate. Uh, those, those crops that are going through that, that point in time, we really have concerns about mispollination or, or just not getting true pollination into those. Our growers need to look at that because the ear might look really good, um, but the actual kernels within them, they'll, they, they won't have successfully pollinated. And so you start seeing some gaps or some skips, especially in these big 100 degree days, that's gonna be the other issue. Um, sorghum's starting to go through that pollination. We're, we're very concerned about that. The other thing we see with sorghum is, is over in the, in, in the late afternoon, you'll start to see sorghum and, and kind of start wrapping up its leaves. And we'll, we'll start to see growers, uh, you know, kind of take pictures on Twitter and all that about um, their, their leaves looking a little rolled during the later parts in the afternoon. That's okay. That's, that's part of what that crop does. It's, it's trying to mitigate itself from those 100 degree, it's, it's decreasing that surface area, kind of rolling itself up. As long as we're not rolled up at eight or nine o'clock in the morning or deeper in the evening, we're okay. If they unfurl in the morning, we're still in a good spot. At three or four o'clock in the afternoon is probably not a good time on a 100 degree day to check and see if you're drought stressed. Go out there at eight or nine o'clock in the morning when we got cooler temperatures temperatures, the humidity's up, and see if that if that crop is still rolled up, we're, we're really concerned with that. If it's open, like, like we see uh, a lot of these leaves back here to where they're fully open, they're fully expanded, we're still okay. So that's that's kind of your, your going back and forth on, on where it is. Look for that drought stress earlier in the morning. Uh, if it's still rolled up, then, then you have something to be concerned about. Let's talk about insect pressure now. That's kind of come on suddenly too, the way I understand it. What are you seeing? Yeah, I, I was sitting there watching the show a couple weeks ago and Tom was talking about how there's, there's some out there and we see some indication of what he was talking about, some of these bullet hole leaves um, with the worms we've had in some of our grassy crops. Um, but what we're starting to see in is we got our first uh, indication of sugarcane aphids in the southwest part of the state this week. Um, so that's something that growers down there and as they start to work north um, that, that they need to be scouting for. The other thing is for our soybean producers, um, we're starting to see a lot more of the, the worms and the caterpillars moving to soybean. And we started seeing a lot of stink bugs show up in soybeans. So right as soon as those soybeans are flowering, starting to set pods, that's where we can lose a lot of yield really early is, is if we let those, those foliar feeding insects and those pod feeding insects get at those really small pods as they're developing. So growers need to get out there, get their sweep nets out, get their 
they're checking boots on because it's time to get out in your summer crops. I know it's not, not an enjoyable thing to, to get out here in the 100 degrees, but as we're starting to get weed out, it's time to start getting in our other crops and start checking because we, we definitely have some pressure starting to build from our insect pests. Okay, well, we appreciate the update, Josh, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks.